Welcome back everyone. Today we're talking about Warlock builds for Baldur's Gate 3. And in this video, we're going to talk about what makes the Warlock such a powerful spellcaster. It has the ability to have exciting gameplay, deal tons of damage, and survive all at the same time. There are some options that feature Warlock as multi-class. However, for this build guide, we're going to cover the class up to level 4. And staying as a pure class is very beneficial at this point to unlock your first feat. Let's get into it right away. And if you're choosing this as your main hero, you'll have the option to select your race. In this video, we're going to cover respecting Will, who is one of the companions, so we won't be able to change our race from the default human. However, the Warlock is extremely versatile on its race selection. Feel free to choose any of them. You'll be able to get through the game just fine. Let's get right into the cantrips here. We're going to take Eldritch Blast, and this is going to be our main source of damage output for the early parts of the game. And as I mentioned later, you could multi-class or even change the character's build in a more dramatic fashion. But while we have this, and while we're in the early stages of the game, Eldritch Blast is extremely powerful, and you'll start to see some of the synergies we get from this as we get further in the video. On top of that, we're going to take Blade Ward. Blade Ward is going to allow us to take half the damage from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing attacks. In general, we're going to be spamming our Eldritch Blast as our action. It doesn't take up a spell use charge, so we can just cast this over and over every turn. But if for some reason you find yourself in a situation where you're out of range of the enemies, or you just need to basically escape or ensure they're your own survival, you might want to use Blade Ward. In general, there are some more niche options here like Friends or even Mage Hand, but for somebody on their first playthrough, I recommend going with Blade Ward and Eldritch Blast, but feel free if you feel more experienced to take one of the other options there for your second cantrip. For the subclass, we'll be taking the Fiend. This has to do with the subclass feature, Dark One's Blessing. When you reduce a hostile creature to zero hit points, the gift from your patron is going to grant us four temporary hit points. Here we're starting to see some of these added survival and defensive properties that are going to allow us to be in the midst of the battle and still stay alive. For spells, we'll be taking Armor of Agathus. This is going to give us five more temporary hit points and it lasts until long rest. So you can cast this as soon as you leave the camp. And it also does five rhetorical cold damage to any creature that hits us with a melee attack. Just giving us some more damage output, and like I said, we will be in the midst of certain encounters, so it's nice to have just some extra damage going out when targets hit us. Hex. This is a bonus action, so this is going to take up a spell charge when you use it, but it's a bonus action as I mentioned, so you can cast this first and add 1-6 to six damage onto the target and give it disadvantage of an ability of your choosing, and then follow up with the Eldritch Blast, just adding on damage and allowing you to burst targets, pick out key priority targets, and things of that nature. Before we go any further, and since we're all RPG fans, I'd like to take a minute and show my thanks and appreciation for the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Bloodline Heroes of Lythus, and allow me to unveil the amazing world of Bloodline Heroes of Lythus as well. This game elevates RPGs and gacha gameplay to new heights through its innovative air system. This is a system where you can forge your very own legendary champions as you blend the bloodlines of captivated beings such as elves, demons, demigods, orcs, dwarves, lichens, dragonborn, vampires, and countless others, giving you a truly unique gaming experience. It's absolutely free to play. Download it now using the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen if you're viewing it on PC. The game is designed with stunning graphics to provide a top tier visual experience on mobile phones and smart pads. Enjoy collecting fantasy characters in full 3D graphics. Customize your champions by marrying any two bloodlines to create over a thousand fantasy hybrids and endless possibilities for your lineups and matchmaking strategies. The hybrids inherit not only the talents and traits of their parents, but also their unique appearances, passed down from each family tree and fused into one. New bloodlines with unique abilities and companion forms for each gender are released every two weeks. The game is constantly being improved and updated with new content and the fun of creating new hybrid combinations never ends. All players can obtain uniquely designed hybrid champions, Bloodcraft Legends, by earning points in seasonal guild wars. Download the game now for free on both Android and iOS. Use my link in the description or scan the QR code if you're viewing it on PC to get a special starter pack worth $20 using either of those. One summoning crystal, 100,000 gold, and 100 diamond. On top of that, the first 30 players who leave their in-game account ID and username in the first pinned comment section below will receive a free legendary female orc, Ugro, one of the best warriors to carry you in the game. For your abilities here, you have some flexibility. I'm going with a fairly extreme loadout here, and you can certainly change this. We'll cover this one first. I'll talk about a couple of the things you can do. I'm going to put the bonus two points into Charisma, and one bonus point into Dexterity. 
Now you may notice that there's two odd numbers here and we will correct this when we get to level four and get our first feet point. And I'll talk more about that when we get there. However, you do have options here. You can take some points out of decks here, giving you an additional four points and say you wanna increase your carrying load. A lot of people like to pick everything up in the first playthrough, boosting your strength or even boosting one of these intellect or wisdoms is also an option if you want a more well-rounded character. If you're comfortable with your party selection and knowing which each member kind of strives at and you're able to use them in different situations to get the most out of them, you can go with a more aggressive build like this. And this would be my recommended choice if you happen to be comfortable with that. For proficiencies, I rec recommend taking ones that benefit from both dexterity and charisma because these are the two stats that we have the highest. I would recommend athletics. Reason for that is because we will be in melee range, as I've said a couple of times here, and this will just help you resist being shoved. We're also going to have methods of traveling great distances with this character as we get higher level. So there's potential that you could be on a ledge or near an edge, anything to that effect, and having the ability to resist shove is going to make things a lot safer as you move around. After that, I would recommend putting the bonus points into things like Intimidation and Deception, just because you get additional bonus from them. So it works out fairly favorable for you. Let's go ahead and confirm this and get on to the second level here. All right, as we get into level two, we're going to unlock another spell. And what I recommend here is Expedious Retreat. As I mentioned, we want this character to be mobile. Take advantage of that. And this is part of the reason why we're taking additional points into Athletics. Because we're going to eventually end up into melee range of an enemy, we're going to be taking advantage of Terrain Height. And Expedious Retreat is going to give us Dash immediately as a bonus action. And on each of our turns until the spell ends, and again, this spell lasts until long rest. So we're just stacking a number of buffs on our character that last a very long period of time. For Eldritch Invocations, we're going to take Agonizing Blast. When you cast Eldritch Blast, it's going to add our Charisma modifier to the damage it deals, unless it's negative. Well, it's certainly not going to be negative in our case. We're going to be stacking this stat, and we're even going to improve it at level 4. The second choice I take, at least with Will, is going to be Devil's Sight. You're going to be able to see normally in darkness, both magical and non-magical, to a distance of 24 meters. This is going to be very advantageous in situations just allowing you to have dark vision, even though you are playing as a human race. For other races, you have a number of selections you can take here. Completely up to you. They're fairly flexible. Repelling Blast is an interesting choice. There's a chance that you can push a creature up to 4.5 meters away. When you hit the creature with Eldritch Blast, this can really make things interesting. If they're near a ledge, you can knock them off, deal additional damage, often kill enemies in one turn. So something to check out and keep an eye on if you're playing a different race. And some of the other selections as well add some more RP effects and allow you to interact with more of the game as well. So keep those in mind too. So let's go ahead into level 3. At level 3, we're going to get our Pact Boon. However, we have to select a spell first. And what I choose here is actually an AoE damage spell. So we've been avoiding damage spells up until this point, relying on Eldritch Blast. But Cloud of Daggers are just so powerful for dropping on multiple mobs, making them take damage, cutting off areas for the mobs to go through, or else they'll suffer damage, just funneling them into better positions for your party, making the situation advantageous for yourself or other party members, like I said. So I really like this spell. And I think it's worth taking. If you don't want the AoE damage here, Hold Person is also a great option, and feel free to check that out. Crowd Control is extremely effective in this game, so this is definitely worth a look as well. But in general, I think that Cloud of Daggers is very powerful and worth taking at this point. For the Pact Boon, we'll take Pact of the Blade, and this is essentially going to summon a weapon to our hand. Using the Wielder's Spellcasting Ability Modifier and its damage is magical. Well, we're going to be using Charisma for this, and we're boosting the Charisma. In fact, at level 4, we're going to boost it even further, so this just synergizes really well with the build. That level is quick enough. We'll get into level 4 at this point, and we're going to get our first feat. Now we get, again, another cantrip. And here you may want to kind of branch out if you haven't already. In my case, I personally just start to take Mage Hand. I can interact with certain things. Just gives me a little versatility. For spells at this point, I like to pick up the whole person, like I mentioned. In this case, there's still some other options. Again, you can avoid most of the damage options. Charm Person is also an option as well. Command is decent, however, you probably have this from another character at this point. Now, we get to select our feed at this point, and I'm actually going to recommend the ability improvement because we have two odd stats with this build, and this is going to allow us to get some additional hit points from adding this point in Constitution, and you'll see that our health immediately is going to jump up by four points, and we're going to continue to get additional hit points every level from this as well. On top of that, we'll take Charisma because this build is so reliant on Charisma. In fact, it's really the only stat that we're doing anything in terms of ability checks. 
So this will round out the build up to level four. And at this point, you have a lot of options where you can go from there whether you want a multi-class or whether you want to continue on with the warlock path or just try a completely different route but this will definitely get you started very successfully in the game as always thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great time